Hey everybody, this is Brian from PB Homesteading. Wanted to show you the update for the large grow tent. And you can see some of the new seedlings have already started to come up. So we've got the, uh, this is the one, the uh, Papalo Mexican herb that they said, oh, you'll maybe get 50% germination on that. But uh, after just a week, you can see those little guys in there, they're over an inch tall. I'm really happy to see that. So they must love the conditions in here. And you know, I figure. If a poinsettia is going to do what it does in here like this, any kind of uh, you know southern, south southwestern type herb or Mexican herb, it's probably going to do really well in this type of tent setup that I've got. But uh, let's get to the other ones. So we've got the uh, Caribe cilantro. You can see it's sprouted, and we've got some sprouts coming up over here for the uh, other version of the uh, Caribe cilantro. So I had two of those same ones in those two pots. And let's go over here to the other side. I don't see anything sprouting up inside of the uh, peone flat leaf parsley. So that one there still, you know, I don't, I'll probably have to look on the package and see what the germination rate is of that one. But the uh, the garlic chives you can see have uh, started to come up. Those look really nice. The uh, cinnamon basil is really taken off. I mean, you can just see the amount of sprouts we have in here. And I had to pull some of the dirt that was covering off, uh, covering up these guys because they had actually pushed up the dirt. So I grabbed a couple of handfuls off here and just kind of spread it around on the edge. But, uh, you know, there's still some more guys coming up underneath here. You can see if I flake this dirt off, there's a bunch more coming up underneath. So they still haven't pushed up through, but uh, I kind of helped those along a little bit by pulling that dirt off. But I'm really happy to see that uh, all the herbs are coming up. I did have to turn the water down a little bit because I noticed it was starting to flood in some of these. Getting a little bit too much standing water in the bases of uh, a few of these ones that have the double uh, extra nozzles in them. The ones that have an extra single nozzle, they're not getting any water build, build up down there. So I kind of cut this back. I'm doing it every uh, 45 minutes for two seconds of spray time. So uh, that, that should cut back on the uh, amount of standing water we have. There's a lot of tomato set and uh, red knee to these tomatoes. Paula came down here this weekend and we picked probably 20 of these uh, indigo rose tomatoes off of all the different plants we have in here. But uh, I've had to start curving over, as you remember last week, I had a bunch that were growing up the side of the tent here and coming up to the ceiling. So I've taken those and I've kind of curved them over the top here and laid them across the cages, so I'm going to let them grow that way. Hopefully that's not going to choke off too much of the flowering growth for the older plants back here, but you can see there's red tomatoes there. Lots of red tomatoes over this way. And then there's that pop-up Remember that little pop-up cherry tomato we had? You can see I've got five little red tomatoes. We've got two there, three more up here, and it's still growing. But uh, Paula's been picking off all those. As you can see, there's, a, there's a, quite a few missing back there. She came through here this weekend and uh, ate pretty much all of them before I can get the video. I told her she had to leave at least some of them on there so that way I could film it and say that there's actually ripening tomatoes on that little pop-up. Now, that almost looks like one of those uh, it's like Matt's Cherry Tomato from uh, either Johnny's Seed or I think High Mowing even has that seed. It's, a, it's like a Matt's, Matt's Sweet Galleon or Billion, Sweet Billion Tomato or something like that. I can't remember what the name of it is, but uh, they, 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 they look a lot like that. Uh, but I don't remember Paula buying any of that because uh, that would have been seed that came through the worm compost that came in here. But anyway, we've got a lot of red ones. I mean, you can see these, these two really nice looking ones down here. They're getting red. I mean, those are big. Look at those guys. Those are going to be so nice. When we came down and harvested a bunch of basil. We've noticed that there's a bunch of basil leaves that are starting to turn a little brown in here on the, the leaf tips and on some of the leaves. So, uh, like this one here, I think they're just getting to that stage where they're getting a little older and uh, the sun's starting to, to bake them a little bit. So we've been trying to harvest off as much as we can in here. And then eventually, this is going to get taken out and we're going to have the new well, that was the other thing I talked about last week. We're going to put in a plant wall here that hangs. And I found something on Amazon. It's around 29 bucks, and it's a vertical grow bag system. It's made out of the same material as, like, these big pot grow bags here. Well, not pot grow bags, but grow bag pot containers. And I'm going to have that. I'm going to hang that on the wall. I'm going to build a little 2x4 frame for it. And I'll hang that here, and it has, I think, a space for either 18 or 20, like almost one gallon size pots. So then I'll probably take this light, move it up, and I'm going to angle it this way. And I may get another light to hang down a little lower so I can angle it. That way I'll have two lights here angled. And then I can have a vertical wall of plants coming down. And I'll move that fan, of course. 
but uh, that's going to give me another growing space that I can actually put along that wall that's kind of wasted. And I can put a whole bunch of different herbs in there for Paula. So then we'll have, and then at the base of it, we'll have something like the basil sitting on the floor. So that way when the water for the automatic drip system drips in and sprays the spray, either spray or drip, I haven't determined which one I'm going to do. In those pots, the water excess will drip down and go right into the trays down below. And then underneath that, I'll probably have some kind of a catchment tray to where, uh, actually I could use, I've got an extra one of these things. In the other video I had, I showed this, what I put in the big tent, or the small mid-sized tent. So I've got this extra tray that I put in with a drip hole. I could actually put this inside that large tent. I put it right underneath where that basil's at, and I can put a catchment, you know, probably another two gallon pot or something like that, or a two gallon drum, or I could have it run into a, you know, that poinsettia, have it watered, it'll probably be a continuous watering system that'll come down the wall, go into the stuff on the trays, drip through the trays, drain into the poinsettia. So that may be an idea, but uh, otherwise I can put another little, you know, catchment barrel in here, and then I'll just dump it into, you know, the tomato plant containers over there that stay a little drier, and it'll get sucked up by those. That's just kind of the ideas of what's happening with the tent. Progress is going nice. We've got tons of uh, ripening tomatoes in here heading into uh, November this next week. So first week of November, Halloween weekend, or Halloween Tuesday, you know, first of November will be Wednesday. So uh, we're getting into the colder months where we're not getting any production outside, but we've got it growing in here. Okay. All right, everybody. This has been Brian from P&V Homesteading. <laughs> i talk to you again. Bye.